Good morning. This morning we are going to take a observation of the sun using a 60 millimeter refracting telescope and certain specialized equipment. I'm starting by recording the setup before the live stream is due to occur or at least the first part of it, because this can be a little tricky. So, there are a few special considerations with this situation here. Um, now, one of these could be taken care of simply by going outside, but then it would make it very hard to live stream, because live streaming requires a good, solid connection. And I don't want to, you know, try to do that with Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the telescope in here, and you can see I've got a good, solid uh, ray of sunlight coming through. Uh, that's, that's good. That means that I should be able to line the telescope up so that I can get a look at the sun. So, the basic setup of the telescope starts taking the telescope's tube and attaching it to the mount. screw here and I want to also do two things with this mount before I even plug it in. Let me bring it in closer so you can see. Now, while I'm uh, setting my tripod up so I can get a nice stable shot, look at the shadows that the telescope is casting on the floor. What you want to do, ideally, you want to never look uh, through the eyepiece at the sun. Uh, never, well, never ever look through the eyepiece at the sun without uh, certain special equipment. And I'm going to show you. What's in this box right here? This is called a solar filter. And what it does is it blocks 99 percent or more of the light from the sun. Currently, I have the lens cap on the telescope. You can see it there. So nothing's going through it. If you've ever seen what a magnifying glass can do with sunlight, the telescope can do that much more effectively. It can absolutely burn things including permanently damaging your eyeball. So, never ever look through a telescope at the sun without the kind of special equipment and instruction that I provide. The first time you do this, you shouldn't do it by yourself, but with experienced help. So, with that warning out of the way, I attach the telescope and using, without any sort of power, just I need to sort of grossly position it uh, so that, uh, let's see if I can show you from here, 
So you can see the shadow of the telescope there. I want to position it so that this shadow is as small as possible. And then I want to use this, uh, this nut on the side of it to lock it into place. So. And then I'm going to fine tune it using the controls after I power them up. The other consideration is if I want to uh, have the telescope try to track for a while is I need to level it off. Now, with the light being the way it is, I don't think you'll be able to... You can kind of make out the leveling uh, device there. So I have to unlock these legs. And then using one hand, lift it up, get it as close to level as I can. So now with it uh, somewhat level and somewhat pointing at the sun, I begin connecting up the electrical power. Now I bought and use a heavy duty uh, extension cord with this. See, it's very thick for. I bought it specifically for outdoor kind of use, in case I need to use it with my car as a generator, or if I take my telescope out uh, someplace out of the way, I can set it up pretty much anywhere. And a surge strip so that I can charge whatever devices I have. And deceptively uh, important, actually, is this little tray. Holding things like eyepieces. Plug this in. Now with the power uh, in, and turn it on. I need to attach the solar filter. Problem is, a special spool of invisible tape I bought just for this purpose is all out. So. No, so I'm going to have to go and get some more tape. But I've got the tape. I have to stand in front of the uh, eyepiece, trying to not let any sunlight in there. And then I put this filter on. Now, it's the right size for the telescope and everything. And theoretically, it shouldn't just pop off or anything, but the only tape I could find is this double-sided stuff, which is not, not really great, but uh, I'm going to tape this on here. 
see it came off a little bit. So I don't want to go with this just mm, precariously resting on it. Not if I'm putting my expensive cell phone camera up against it, not to mention my eye. Now, the reason I'm going to stream this view out via YouTube and not Zoom, I really don't want us doing that type of thing. Uh, at least, I think YouTube's okay. I mean, you can post YouTube videos, so it's okay to stream that. But the reason I'm streaming this via YouTube and not just using Zoom is Zoom is limited to 1080p. So it's like an older, uh, lower resolution, high definition. Whereas 4K, which is what YouTube is capable of, gives me ultra high resolution. In the case of astronomy, the name of the game is angular resolution. So how far across the aperture of the telescope is. So the wider the aperture and the smaller the wavelength, the better the angular resolution. For a constant wavelength, bigger telescope is better. So uh, without changing anything else about my system, I want to get a better uh, ratio between the angular resolution and the pixels on the screen. You kind of got to see that with a uh, problem that dealt with the Hubble telescope in which you were asked to figure out the size of the field of view of the Hubble telescope in uh, square arc minutes, basic, or arc seconds. Basically, if each pixel is, you know, 0.1 arc seconds on a side, and there's a thousand pixels this way and a thousand pixels that way, then uh, 0.1 times a thousand, and then you square that. So you just had to do a bit of multiplication uh, for that problem. That's all that was. Um, so if you did that, then you understand why it's important to get the highest possible resolution. Okay, now that I've got that attached, I don't want to attach a eyepiece just yet. Instead, before I even begin trying to align the telescope. Sure it's on. I thought I turned it on. <clears throat> so before I even try to align the telescope, I need to just, like I said, use the use the um, shadow on the floor back there to sort of get it, get a fine tuning on the alignment. Let me go. It doesn't help that the pattern of the window is in the way and um, this makes me think that maybe the actual, like if you see where it's pointing, it's possible the actual window might be in the way and I need to just move the telescope back a little bit. Still reasonably level, that's what I was a bit worried about. So now you can see I've got a, a clean 
unobstructed shadow other than the telescope being there. And I just have to try to move it so that the telescope's shadow is as small as possible. That will mean that it's at least roughly lined up. And you can also see, in particular, the shadow of the eyepiece there. So I want the eyepiece's shadow to be as close to a perfect circle as possible. Now there comes a point in this process where there really is no way to go other than to have to sight down the telescope averting my eyes from the sun and squinting so that I don't get my eyes burned. Okay, now that the and if the video missed that, uh, basically, uh, what I did was I had to follow the same alignment technique as for aligning it with a, uh, a planet. In fact, in this uh, segment of video here, you can even kind of see the dot of sunlight through there. So what I'm going to do now, I was thinking I would use this older camera, but I want to see what my newer camera, the one I'm recording this uh, procedure on, can do. So what I'm going to use is this device here. Uh, this will hold the This will hold the uh, camera phone to to the telescope and allow me to line up its uh, its camera. Uh, problem is, with a lot of these things, they're designed to hold a cell phone on. Uh, they you know, it, it, the Bixby button keeps getting pressed. So, that can lead to this being a little, a little off. A little time has passed between these cuts. Um, in the process of trying to get everything lined up with the camera, I actually lost the telescope alignment. And what makes this even more complicated with these newer cell phones is that in addition to the Bixby button always getting in the way, and I have to try to line up the camera, the cell phone with everything, uh, is Just all the complications that come from doing observational astronomy on top of everything else. I can use the annoying fact that on the Samsung, uh, Note 20, the Bixby button is right where this clamp needs to be. And you can see the camera trying to do its thing and focus. I 
Now, there don't seem to be any super large features on the sun, if this is right. Could just mean I don't have it quite in focus. But while I'm at it, I'm going to <clears throat> capture some still images here. playing with different levels of focus, hoping at least some of them will be good. Take lots and lots of pictures. And you can see it getting a little bit out of alignment there. Uh, now I'm going to stop and try with a still picture. So far, everything looks good on this end stream-wise. Part of um, something I want to point out is there's a reason that so much of this uh, field of view isn't filled with, uh, with sun and it's not quite centered. Just getting these cameras lined up at all is a bit of a challenge. So if I move this too much, it's out unaligned with one thing, if I move it much this way, it's unaligned with the other. But it works out fine because I can keep what we're viewing in one part of the screen. Yeah, my apologies, but YouTube is really not, really not letting me stream at 4K. 
saying the bit rate I have is too high. So I'm going to have to stop and see if I can reconfigure quickly enough that it will uh, Yeah, really, it really wants to limit me to 1440p. I wonder if that is something artificial. So, one more. So 1440p is a bit disappointing. Uh, I know I've seen people stream in 4K. Maybe you need to have 10 million subscribers or something before you can do that. Who knows? YouTube changes their rules uh, every so often. They also change them a little bit in response to the pandemic with so many more people. Uh, wanting to stream video out from them. Maybe they just don't have the bandwidth to let every random uh, go ahead and stream at 4K. But anyway, 1440p is much better than what uh, uh, Zoom would allow. So there you go. There's the sun. Now that we've gotten through some of that technicality of getting you a stream, Let's see about um, Let's see about, um, well, what I want to take a look at is what we can compare this to. So an important thing in science is uh, to compare what you observe, uh, to compare what you observe to someone else's observation. And one would expect, like for example, how can I know that this is really what the sun looks like today and not just a random sort of brightness from having this thing generally pointed outside. So, uh, let me switch over. Let's look up the uh, of course, Duck Duck Go thinks you're talking about the neighborhood in New York. Um, so this is the sun as it looks right now. Uh, there don't appear to be any major sunspots which I know my telescope is capable of picking up. So while sunspots would be a little satisfying in that they would be something that's absolutely unique to a view of the sun, they're just don't appear to be any. There's a little teeny tiny one like right up here. Um, little teeny tiny one there. 
Now, in order to try and see it, I need to take this. Um, I would need to take this uh, this camera right here off the telescope and use a different eyepiece. Now, that's one way. Another way, because I took photographs of the sun when, for some reason, that camera froze. Because I took photographs of the sun uh, in the process of setting up, you know, use the uh, camera app professional mode to take some, some photographs. And using that, we can uh, look at those and see if we've got that sunspot there. Just a teeny tiny one in the upper left hand of the sun. That's it. Other than that, as you can see from looking at this image, there's not any large sunspots. Uh, can I maybe can I maybe zoom in? too much. You can see it's, it's all very, very temperamental. Not getting it lined up at all. And Bixby activates. And when Bixby activates, Bixby likes to take over. We can maybe get a look at that that sunspot. Now we're starting to run up against uh, the fact that the sun's about to move out of my field of view completely. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, I can try to move the telescope a little bit. But as you can see from how temperamental it all is, like just bumping a cable and the app I was using freezes. to my computer again, stop it, start it again. So you can see moving the telescope to give uh, a little better view is going to be very tricky. just lose it and it would be like a half hour ordeal to get it back completely. But see if I move it this way just a little bit. moving it like this, you can still see a little bit of the light. And then just like that again, the app is frozen and I can't see it.
plug the USB, plug it back in, get this all connected up, grant permission to my computer so it can access the phone, browse the file manager, um, switch the stream over so you're not just seeing something frozen and hearing my voice, and um, So now I can access the files on the phone, connect to it, and switch back over. Now this might might actually worked out. Yeah, it's not frozen on the phone. Yeah, this, this is going to take um, some time to set back up. not bother with it since I recorded the setup uh, for everybody earlier and I might just go ahead and look at the still pictures with you guys but let's give it one more try let's give it one more try so I need to uh, stop the app that I use to connect when I do, it brings uh, this image out here. Now you can see, you can actually tell it's already out of alignment with the sun because when the sun's aligned in here, you can actually see it even standing way back. can't move it just a little bit and reacquire the sun. And basically, that's it for this live stream at least. Yeah, so basically for this <coughs> switch to uh, my much nicer phone camera. So for this live stream, uh, that's it for uh, the live observations. Now let's take a look at take a look at the still images that I captured earlier, and see if we can find <coughs> that sunspot. Now the only thing that can be harder than uh, finding where your uh, what I'm gonna do is. Uh, OBS to capture yet another window. Window capture, which is the one that I use to view my pictures. There we go. And here we go. So let's see if we can zoom in and find that 
that sunspot in any of these images. a tiny one so I'll look at some of the later ones I took there I used the uh, professional mode to try and Close the shutter as much as I could. And you can still see the sensor is very saturated. But yeah, not not quite able. Now, one thing about telescopes is they tend to flip things around a bit so we can't just look up there and see if we see it. We have to look all around. Yeah, let's see if I can zoom in and see any of that. Yeah. Now, in order to get more zoom, uh, astronomically speaking, uh, what I would need to have done is taken the camera, camera off using uh, a different uh, eyepiece and known exactly where to look to even see that one tiny little sunspot. But given uh, uh, given what we are uh, you know, what we've been seeing from From that NASA image. Go ahead and uh, screen capture, add existing, oh no, not screen capture, uh, window capture. This one. And let's see if we can look at them side by side. So one is the NASA image and the other is our image. So let's take a look at these side by side and see what we can see. So obviously our image is the one that is uh, on screen left and the NASA image is the one on screen right and uh, you can see there's just no sunspots that are really super visible today um, there's one itty bitty teeny tiny one right here another itty bitty teeny tiny one i think right over here no no that's, that's just dirt on my screen yeah this one right here right here that's that's it and i can barely yeah so yeah, there's, there's nothing that uh, with the eyepiece I have on there now and uh, 
and the um, size of telescope that I have that I can uh, see, and even NASA's own satellite can barely see uh, that. So with that, I um, guess I can call an end to this live stream. Um, remember, what you have to try and do is watch this stream, or better yet, I'm going to um, post a video that will have the procedure that I followed and recorded earlier uh, all edited together uh, along with key parts of this stream, and you should watch that. Uh, I'll leave this up for anyone who's interested uh, in seeing uh, some of the dirty details of science when you do it live. And um, yeah, that's all there is. Uh, then write up what you see for your lab report, and that's part of what you have to do. Okay? Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being good students.